Hello, future tubers, as well as live tubers, and welcome to uh, a let's try, maybe let's play, we'll see how it goes, of uh, a, a game <laughs> called Lobotomy Corporation. Uh, I expect it's not super well known. Um, it's not like a uh, a mainstream title. It's probably pretty indie, and I believe it was uh, a Korean game originally, like a well, Korean development team that you know hired translators and all that. Um, so it's it's not like a it's, it's not like you know the next Mass Effect or something. But it's it's pretty cool. So it's it's kind of a, a base management simulator with uh, monsters and stuff, and you're mostly managing employees and monsters, and you know, we'll get into the details as we go, but it's a uh, little different, and we're gonna take names from from uh, Patreons, patrons, and the chat and stuff, and we'll throw you guys into the, uh, the base, the monster base, trying to suppress the monsters, and you'll probably die, but it's fine. Um, so one thing to note before we even get started here, um, this game doesn't have a perfect translation, from what I heard, the story is kind of like the guys that developed the game hired some translation company to, you know, translate it all from, I think, Korean to, to English and other languages. And they did not do a great job. And uh, I think the developers got a little bit sort of screwed. So there's going to be some grammar. Generally, the, the spelling's not bad, but the, 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 the grammar is not up to par, really. But it's okay. It's not really terrible. It's just be warned that it's not like a, a native English sort of. Uh, writing and there is some some certainly some some text to read that we'll go through uh, other than that uh, right at the beginning here if you do know about lobotomy corporation whether you're a live tuber or a future tuber uh, I'm gonna have to ask that you do not post spoilers in the chat or in the comments uh, or else you'll probably just get banned because although I know a little bit about what's going on I've played through some uh, there'll be people watching that don't know it at all so we'll try to keep it spoiler free where possible. A lot of the fun of this game is learning about the critters, the monsters, the abnormalities as they're called as we go along. And um, if you're familiar with, what is it, SPC I think is the acronym or whatever, there's, it's like I don't know anything about it besides this game, but there's kind of a subset of like, what do we call it, like a monster genre of like mystery horror monsters in the SPC sort of world. I think it's Maybe from like a manga, or I don't know, it might be. Like, I don't even really know much about it, honestly. But anyway, this is kind of related to some of that stuff, so, uh... So those of you that are familiar with that will probably be familiar with some stuff, even if I am not. Uh, that said, uh, that's all there is to say. Let's, let's start the day. Uh, so, one of the things about the way this game works, uh, again, you know, early game introductions, uh, it's, you could play Iron Man mode with no restarting ever, but the game isn't really designed for that. You can, every, like, game cycle, every game day, if too many people die or the, the base gets wrecked, you can just restart the day in-game. Like, it's easy. It's built for that. So we won't, you know, I'm not going to say I'm going to reload every time someone dies, because I'm not. But, um, you know, sometimes we'll have to reset. So it's not like it's, uh, it's not like a, uh, what do we call it? Uh, an Iron Man sort of game. There's also a mechanic where if your base, depending on what happens, gets kind of messed up and you're halfway through the game, give or take, or a third of the way, I don't know, a few hours in, whatever, and you just can't finish a day, you reset, you keep all of your information and your weapons and a bunch of upgrades, and you go back to day one with all of that power. So it's kind of got this cyclical uh, improvement uh, idea. So if we struggle, don't worry, there's a way to get around it. And there we go, we've got someone in chat helping with the SPC, SCP thing. More about horror writing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of what I thought. I just didn't know how to explain it. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. So yeah, it, it's got some sort of lore background. There's a lot of elements like that. So let's just get going. Let's, I just wanted to try to introduce it because it's kind of a complicated, weird setup. It's it's not like any other game I've played. So it's, it's definitely got some, some weirdness. So every day will begin other than this one, with picking three. You have one out of three that you get to pick, and they'll give you kind of a, a hint on what it will be. And I know a good number of them at this point. Now, day one is special, then you always get the same one. But other than that, you usually have three boxes and you pick one. So, it feeds on the evil that surfaces during conversations between people. This is where we'll find some of our grammar mistakes and all that, but... Um, these things are... Uh, it actually reminds me a lot of Ghostbusters, because, like, you know, they're kind of in these little containment cells, and then you open them up and you have to deal with them. It's, it's got a lot of that kind of vibe, so. 
It's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, it is a little bit anime, you know, you know the drill. Also, the music is surprisingly good, if you're wondering. So hopefully you guys can hear the music. So, hello, X. Welcome to Lobotomy Corporation. I am Angela, your advisor and secretary. Even though I am AI, feel free to talk to me. It's rare for an AI to have a name. I am created from one of the wings of the world. That means I am one of the best. Nah, I know what you are thinking. You're thinking that I look too human to be an AI, aren't you? But there is a big difference. I am bound here. I can't go anywhere I want like you do. I can open a door or prepare a cup of coffee for you, but I can't go outside to enjoy the sun or breeze. Well, as you can see, my hair color is that of the morning sky after the rain, my voice is that of the wisest person in the world, and my face is that of the person with the most beautiful smile, except she's not smiling. Ha! <laughs> that was a joke. There's no such person in real life. My appearance has been made to be attractive to as many people as possible that like anime. If you feel attracted to me, I am working as intended. Well, AIs are far more efficient than humans with multitasking. That's why we're getting a new CPU. Uh, I have the best in most areas. Uh, she chats a lot. I can do the work of several dozen people at once. Like a computer. I am sure that many people lost their job because of me. That's probably for the best, given what I know about this job. <laughs> I wouldn't feel sorry for them, actually. It's probably better if they're all AIs at this point. Enough for the introduction. Do you have anything that you want to know? So you, you get these, like, you know, you can ask a question, uh, only one per run. So you don't get, it's not like, uh, well, Mass Effect, again, we'll continue to the, the thing, where you can generally go through all the dialogue options. Just pick one and let's learn about the company because, you know, sure. It's, it's Lobotomy Corporation, right? Not bad for a question. Let me put it this way. The energy consumption rate is ever increasing as technology, this is in the future, sorry, by the way. <laughs> the energy consumption is ever increasing as technologies advance. Conventional energy sources combined could not sustain the world anymore. In search of solutions, we stumbled upon mysterious beings dubbed as abnormalities and figured out that we could harvest energy from these beings using a special method. So like we're playing Ghostbusters, except that after we capture the ghosts, we harvest their energy. Perfect. We isolate them in a controlled environment and harvest energy from them. The company became one of the wings of the world for this discovery. I don't really know much about that, but, you know, standard anime, super government corporation, you know, you get the idea, right? Once you're assigned as a manager, you can access the information about the abnormalities from the encyclopedia. Sure. It is very important that you know and understand these beings to be successful as a manager. Yeah, so this is like super, super important. If you don't figure out these abnormalities, well, you're not going to have a good time. It's empty for now. It's your subordinate's job to fill it with data. That's also kind of an interesting note there. Subordinates. And you have joined the company at an opportune moment. Lobotomy is looking for ways to improve its harvest processes. Our systems are continually updated to support this. Speaking of which, there has been a new update just before you came. That means working conditions have been improved uh, better than your predecessors. I'll just try to skip through that if I can. Think of it as my welcoming gift. I hope you do well. I was about to mention to you. You don't understand the concept of patience, do you? No, I'm actually kind of want to get this started. You know, the YouTubers are waiting. Manager, I think you should meet the other AIs. Lobotomy is a huge corporation and there are many AIs working in different departments. If I'm the Cerebrum, they're the Cerebellum. Naturally, I am your most trusted <laughs> Anyone that starts your introduction with, I am the most trustful. Yeah, that's great. Shall we meet them now? Let's go see who number two is. There's also lots of little hidden details in some of these scenes if you're paying close attention. Uh, we'll get into it eventually, I guess. Manager, manager! My apologies, I am one minute late. Welcome to Lobotomy Corporation. Now, we don't have... We don't need your... Th oh, this is Angela. We have to try to work out some voices for these guys. Now, we don't need your theatrics, Malkuth. Please be punctual. Go prepare for the next meeting. Angela is not in a good mood today. Sephiras are looking forward to meet you. Well, maybe not all of them. Where are my manners? My name is Malkuth. I'm in charge of the control team. Lots of responsibilities, really. I will try my best to help you to enhance the performance of this facility. 
I am sure that you're nervous now. It will take some time for you to get used to things around here. But don't worry, I will help you. I used to be a problem, Sapphira, you know. I once sewed the buttons of a shirt in the wrong direction, or added salt instead of sugar to some food. Aren't you an AI? <laughs> but that was a long time ago, and now I am good. I will give you an easy task, as it's your first day here. Best of luck! I don't even have to do the voice acting. Someone's at the door. They really want our attention. I can't take it anymore! Are you the new manager? I want to get out of here. Please, I, I know you can fire me. Please, I beg you. Why do you want to quit? Don't you like working at the control team? I'm enjoying my work. I can't take it anymore. I will go and say nothing here is normal. I think you're the perfect person for the job. I don't want to be here. I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm sorry for this nonsense. That employee is one of mine. Let me take care of this, please. Eh. I mean, you know, it's her job, right? I will not disappoint you. Please do not be alarmed. These things happen often. Ah, it's your first time. Usually Angela or I handle this kind of situation. It's just a hiccup. Nothing to worry about. No, please, no! So, uh, I guess he probably got fired. So then you generally get a quest. You know, you'll see these fairly straightforward. There, There is a lot of, uh, a lot of dialogue in between missions, so... We just have to stomach through it. Uh, let's see, uh... The main thing here, a little bit of flavor text, and then a, a quest to complete an abnormality work three times. That'll be fine. So this is our, like, uh, base menu where we sort of build up all the different teams as we unlock them. Uh, you can probably guess the names of three different sections, and we start up here. So we'll just go with that. There's only one thing to click. Uh, one thing with this game is it does continue to get bigger so it'll start off very simple and uh, every single day you'll get another room with another monster basically so you know let's just get to it the game takes a little bit long to save and load uh, I'm not sure exactly why but it does slow down a bit for that part this confused me for a while when I first started a memory imprint is kind of the way the game background saves your employee data. Um, <coughs> that will happen every few days, like not every single day, but every so often there's kind of like a background save and you can go back to those. They're kind of like checkpoints, I guess, would be probably the easiest way to say it. All right, although you do save every day, but you know, it's like a if you've sort of messed up, you can go back a few days. Okay, so there's our quest. This is our one team so far that can have three employees and eventually five. We've got one abnormality that we don't know anything about. We'll go over this screen as we can, but for now it's all locked. We don't actually have the resources to unlock any information. And eventually there'll be a story that we'll, we'll chat about as we get that going. Um, anything else on this screen to talk about? Uh, there's a tutorial here. We're not going to go through all this. It's not bad. It's actually a reasonably good tutorial or, you know, back backup manual. But we're not going to go through all that. Um, okay, so assignment needed means you have to assign somebody into one of your departments. Um, so we start with one guy automatically. We'll drag him over there. Finn is our first guy. And I'm just going to make myself right away. So lob points are like your employee, employee hiring points you get every day. Uh, different amounts. So then you get this little screen. We're going to customize them for one additional point, and I'm just going to make myself first because, you know, why not? And then after that, we'll take on chat and so on. So you make yourself a name, and these are your base stats, fortitude, prudence, temperance, and justice. It costs more points to upgrade those, for instance. Um, and then we got a little bit of customization here. So uh, without spending too much time, I'll pick out a, a look for myself. You know, that's fine. You, you can customize manually, but that's good enough. And then we'll pick a face. You know, that, that's, that looks, that's good. That's, yeah, that's fine. Now, there are different options for your, your basic face, your panicked face, and your dead face. But I'll never die, so don't worry about that. And, um, what else is there? That's pretty much all you need on the screen. So, bam, we're hired. So, now we've got two employees. And, uh, we'll see how long Finn lasts. Um... Just so you guys can see at the beginning here, Fortitude is your maximum HP. 
Prudence is your maximum SP sanity points. Uh, kind of the same thing, just some things will deal HP damage, some things will deal sanity damage. So, physical fortitude, mental fortitude. Um, temperance is more like emotional support, and it affects how successful you are with work and how fast you work when you're actually doing a, uh, a, a suppression of an anomaly or something. And then justice is like the hardest stat to really conceptualize. It, it's like repression, so this is like sort of your formal like work ethic or conduct kind of thing, I guess it's supposed to be. Um, or, you know, when you're beating the monsters with a stick or something. I, I don't really know what it's meant to be exactly. Those three are fairly simple to translate. This one's, I'm not sure exactly. Um, and, you know, we'll raise them as we go along. So anyway, let's get to our... Well, there's also equipment, but we don't have any right now, so don't worry about that. <laughs> so let's just get on with it. All right, day one. So this is our base. As we expand the rooms on the other menu, this will also expand, simple enough. You can see us walking around. This is our, I believe it's called the Regenerator. When you're in this room and the bar fills up, you heal. And there are also some bonuses for this section as we upgrade it. For now, we move a little bit faster. So uh, you can see movement speed gets a buff. It's not one, it says movement, well, it just says increases movement speed for all employees by one, but that's not exactly true because we're getting plus four right now. And there's some other effects that apply. So I, uh, I don't know all the details. Anyway, we got our first abnormality. So let's look at this thing. We got some crazy skull thing with a cross. And before we even start, you could look at, sometimes you get a little bit of a story about it, just so you know what to do to start. A silent abnormality that understands the conflict between good and evil. Its empty eye sockets stare at all those who encounter it. A giant skull that is attached to a cross with a crown of thorns. It floats about two meters above the ground. Now, because I sort of know what to do with a lot of these, I don't want to spoil everything by just automatically picking the right choice. So I'll be selecting my openers somewhat randomly rather than pre knowledging everything, like metagaming it kind of thing. I want it to seem a little bit more fair for if you're playing along. So... The way we work is we click on it and we have to select one of the four stats, basically. Instinct for Fortitude, Insight for Prudence, Attachment for uh, Temperance, and Repression for uh, Justice. So you pick one of these that you hope will be successful. Um, there is some logic... Hey, Tim. Um, there is some logic to what works on what. Instinct... Like, you have to think, like, when would being... It's, it's, if you're if you're channeling your your physical strength, when would that work? When are you channel, channeling your mental strength? You're being smart or thinking about it, or your emotional, your feelings, kind of stuff. Or when are you just trying to stop it from being bad? Um, so, if I didn't know anything, I would look at this thing as a weird cross skull. I, I don't know what this would really tell me. Um, maybe you'd want to repress it because you're scared of the skull. Like you know, that's not terrible. We'll send in Finn first because you know why not. Also, eventually we'll be able to fast forward, but for now, just normal speed. So it takes a little bit of time to get there, of course. There's a little door, and there you go. So as you... I'll pause it here for just a second. As they complete the work, these boxes will be produced. And if you fail every sort of... There's sort of a, a random roll. Um, bad things will happen at the top, and your, your employee will generally take damage when that happens. The words inside the room, you can mostly ignore. I believe they're just flavor. But the words down here help you learn what to use on the abnormality. Also, important notes on this screen. This is the symbol for the the work you chose. We picked uh, Repression. You can see it's the same color as Justice. This is the total energy collected from the monster. The energy collected on the current work. Um, and then the other things will make more sense once we have them unlocked. So, having no information on it, Finn is understandably terrified of entering the containment unit. It gently floats in the air and moves sluggishly. Oh, see, we took a little bit of damage there. It has no eyes, but it recognizes the presence of Finn in the room. Finn failed to trigger a reaction from it. This is not good. <laughs> Bearing the pain is half the atonement. When the, when the room flashes like that, that's when he's taking damage. So three, and the red is bad. So we did not succeed very well on that. Um, now, unfortunately, at the moment, 
we can't see his current, like we can see his maximum stats, but we can't see his actual stats. Um, there's a, an upgrade that we'll get before too long that will let us see our HP and SP, our current HP and SP, but not yet. So we'll get there. Now, I believe if we select him from here... Nah, we can't even see it here. Oh, no, 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 we can see it here. I think... I'm not sure if this is an oversight or intended, but from this screen, when you're selecting someone to work, you can see their current SP um, as well as their total. So he took at least 12 sanity damage while he was in there. And if he'd taken too much more, he would have... Well, I mean, what do you think happens if you lose all your sanity? Um, so that was not a good start to our day. If he'd taken... Maybe three more ticks of it. That might have been enough to push him over the edge, maybe. Or if we send him back in right away without letting him hang out in this room. So, like, as we get these little healing bubbles, I'll just do it once so you guys can see. Once this fills up, he should get one. There you go. Particle effects. Awesome. So now if we check Finn, he's actually fully healed. I think it heals at least 10, 10 HP SP per cycle. Probably more than that. So yeah, he's fine, he's ready to go. Um, one thing, sort of meta-wise for later, if you look at our stats, when you take an action, the associated stat will increase a little bit. So, by doing repression, his justice attack speed and movement speed will start going up, and eventually he'll hit justice level 2 as these stats get higher. Um, but it takes a while, and it's kind of complicated, I don't want to get into it too much right now, the higher the level abnormality and the lower the level employee, the bigger the difference. So if you are a high level employee against a low level abnormality, you get less of a benefit. And also the amount of successes. So getting three successes is much worse than getting 10, for instance. Um, anyway, so we got to send someone else in there. But with three whole boxes, we could learn something. We don't have enough money or we don't have enough energy to unlock the name and the basic information or how it will escape or any tips. Usually, I would recommend going for tips first, but we can't afford them, so let's learn about one of the works. So we tried repression, it did not work. Let's check out Insight. Alright, so this is your employee level, or, well, not their employee level, their, the stat level. Insight level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the associated success rate. So, for me, let's take me next. I only have level 1 in all my stats. But now that we have unlocked um, a little bit of research, you can see it says high chance of success. Well, that sounds good. Let's get in there. Will this eventually be on the channel? Uh, maybe. I haven't 100% decided, but uh, I'd, I'd like to get it on the on the channel, yeah. Uh, if I stick with it long enough, is kind of thing, because it's a fairly long game. Oh yeah, I got to unpause it. But yeah, I am I am currently recording. All right, blue. Let's do this. Alright, maybe it's best to send an honest employee to tend to it. You hear the extra little chanting in the background? I don't know if it's loud enough for you guys, but there's a little extra... It's sort of added to the background music. But this is much more successful than Repression. And now our total energy up at the... I'll go over these more as we get to them. Top left green bar is our target for the day. Once we have 15, we can end the day. And then this thing is called the uh, clip-off counter. Clip-off. Yeah, it's probably the clip-off countdown. Well, clip-off. I don't know. Whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, it's, it's a weird word. Um, and then that's like your clip-off level. So we're currently in level 1. Every action will add a bar. Once the bar is full, something will happen. Well, we'll at least show that off. But now that we know more about, we've got more points, let's, uh, let's figure out what it is. So this is one sin and a hundred of good deeds. Hundreds of good deeds. One sin, hundreds of good deeds. So that's the name of the monster, the abnormality. Zayn is its difficulty. Uh, that is the weakest, of course. We start with the weakest out of five. That's its ID number. It does white damage, which is what does sanity damage, and they give you the numbers you need to hit various targets. Eight or higher, you get a good. Uh, three or lower, you get a bad. You know, we've seen both of those already. And then the maximum energy output per work. 
Every time you finish a section, this is one section, this is one section, this is one section, this is one section, you get a, an, an ob observation level, and that gives you a passive buff whenever you work with this monster. So now, even if we sent someone to do repression again, they would still have 5% better success, e even though they kind of sucked last time. They would still do better now. Or, or the things that did well will do even better. So that's kind of how it works. And uh, there you go. So now we know that it's Zayn. We know its name. We probably have unlocked some more story about it. We'll get to that in a second. So we know insight works. Let's send Finn back in there for a little bit more insight. Um, if you're wondering, this is your weapon, the type of damage, the number of damage, and then your defense against the four damage types. That's your armor. We'll, we'll talk about those more as we get further into it. But each stat has an associated damage type. So four colors, four damage types. See you later, Tim. This is a, a pretty cool game, though. Ho hopefully, uh, this makes it to the channel and you get a chance to look at it a bit more thoroughly. As you can see, as soon as you walked into this room, we got our third tick on the clip-off meter. Finn is just not as good as me, obviously. He had 5% better odds, and he still did worse than I did. Technically, we could end our day, but I like to at least finish researching the monster of the day. Because if we don't finish that, then tomorrow there'll be two... And I would at least like to know how to handle one before we get a second, third, fourth kind of thing. So I try to at least finish one per day. Uh, okay, so we got seven points. That's enough to finish this section off if we unlock these three. We still don't even know the important tips like I normally would start with. But So now you can see, for instinct, at low levels, common, insight is high, attachment is high, repression is high, common. Now, just because they both say common doesn't mean that the odds are exactly the same. Um, there's probably some sort of internal, like, high probably means, like, around 70% or so, maybe, say, around 80%, maybe. Common is maybe around 50%, and low might be around 25%. Maybe split them into those kind of categories. But it doesn't mean they're all exactly the same. Level 5 instinct might be worse than level 3 repression. I don't know the background math, but just that's just a, a generalization is what I'm trying to say. It's also affected by your stats your uh these two stats so um with that we can tell that attachment is the best way probably and at low levels insight is also pretty good now early game i think it's generally recommended that you try to increase your hp and sp stats first so that you don't die as easily or go insane um so for now we'll stick with insight but upgrading temperance is probably my favorite stat because it's your success rate and how fast you complete the work. So temperance for me is generally what I prioritize because it's, maybe we should talk about that. But the temperance affects how how successful you are as like, it's sort of an addition to the selected skill kind of thing. Now, what just happened here? Red, red buzzer alarms going off. We finished our first, uh, I'm just gonna call them cycle on the clip off counter. So at the end of the cycle, there was a number there this is the number of units that will have a meltdown. So the red border indicates a meltdown, and then there's a timer here that's going to tick down. Now, because technically we went into the into the facility before the, the meltdown started, this doesn't count to fixing it, and this will be paused until we get out. But normally, once this happens, a, 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 an unused room would start a countdown, and if you don't finish it, then something will happen. Um, the solution is to send someone in before the, the timer's up. And every time we finish a cycle, uh, as the base gets bigger, this number will get higher, and other things will, bad things will join this, other than just, you know, there are other meltdowns besides just rooms going bonkers. And then this keeps track of what level you're at, goes up to at least 10. So, we're working in a room that's melted down, but it doesn't really affect anything, so it's all good. But you can see the counter, the timer is currently paused. As far as I know, the success rates are the same, typically. Maybe some monsters have special... Um, there, there's lots of weird things that can happen with these guys. So, there may be an abnormality that does have different effects during the, uh, the meltdown. But for the most part, it just means you need to send someone in there to work on them. So, that was a pretty good success. 9 out of 10. Good job, self. Now we have 10 points, uh, that's enough to upgrade, up, unlock the tips. The tips tend to be the most useful for avoiding um, breakouts and total base destruction. 
So one sin in hundreds of good deeds restores the employee's sanity points when the work result is good. So this is a random employee that we don't have, but they often just insert random names. Galena, who was on the receiving end, commented that it just it felt refreshing. And then after per prefer perfectly producing PE boxes, one sin and hundreds of good deeds restores the SP of all employees in the department. That's pretty cool. I'll talk about these in a second. So basically, whenever we get a good, which is eight or higher, whoever went in there gets their sanity healed, which is pretty handy. And if you get 10 out of 10, everybody here gets their sanity healed. That's also very cool. Anyway, now the timer starts ticking down. Let's send in Finn, who's traditionally failed us terribly. Yeah, we are studying the crap out of it. Like, this is very important research. <laughs> One sin is the safest of all abnormalities, though, I think. So it's it's really not that bad. It is the newbie guy. You can see it has a positive effect if you're good at your job. Finn has probably failed every time, but we'll see. Maybe he'll do better this time. Also, in the future, we'll be fast-forwarding a lot through this stuff, just to save some time. Oh, no. No perfects for you, Finn. Nice try. At least he got eight. That's his... I needed six or so to get the, uh, the last research. Okay, so with that, we've got 11 P bo PE boxes, energy, 11 energy boxes. We can unlock the final observation level with its escape information. The good news is... One sin does not escape, and he does not have a clip-off counter. This will make more sense once we see one that has a clip-off counter, but essentially, that's where this will go. And generally, when it hits zero, like, they usually start at, say, two or three, and then if something happens, it goes down. And if it gets to zero, bad things tend to happen. So you generally want to keep an eye on that, and uh, if it can escape, they'll tell you there kind of what stats it has. The rest of the screen... Uh, this is the weapon we can make out of its PE boxes, now that we are done researching it, basically. And also the armor we can make it. It's still Zayn class armor and weapons, which are the lowest tier of weapons and armor. But you can see it will reduce red damage by, well, 10%. It'll reduce white damage by 20%. It'll reduce black damage by 10%. And you'll take double damage from Pale, which is very, very rare, so you don't have to worry about that too often. Whereas the weapon... It is a white dealing damage weapon that does 5 to 7 damage of white at a normal speed and a short range. Now, I'll tell you straight up, short or low range, like the shortest of ranges with normal or slow speed weapons tend to be not very useful because things just move out of the way before you can finish your swing. Um, so that's generally not a great combo, but we don't have any choices, obviously. And then the last little thing here you might have noticed is the Ego Gift. This is just every time someone works on it, they have a 5% chance of getting an excess an accessory, basically. And it's just sort of a passive bonus, a little bit of extra maximum SP on their head slot, and it makes them better when working on this specific abnormality. 10% extra effectiveness on him. So if you're going for perfects, someone that has this Eagle Gift is quite useful. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here, but... I would say that, especially if you're playing for the first time, early game, you probably want to spend a little bit of more time after, technically, you could end the day. You probably want to do a couple extra works before then to, uh, you know, grind out a little bit of stats or make sure you got a couple new armors because right now, our armor does nothing. We actually take extra damage from black, tons of damage from pale, neutral damage from red and white, and we've got a red damage stick. We, we hit things with our riot stick. The, the, e even the, the one sin weapons and armor are better than that. So I think what I'll do... I don't want to... I really don't want to waste a ton of time here. I would like to have two or three armors. And that's probably all we'll do before we go. And that won't really take very long. And we'll also get a little bit more SP while we're here. But yeah, this part can be a little bit grindy. You don't have to do this, obviously. But um, the game gets hard, and uh, getting a little bit of a, a snowball early on will definitely help. The problem is with no fast forward, this is really boring. Um, I, I'll probably save this stuff till we have fast forward. And multiple, you know, if we had four abnormalities, we could each work a different one at the same time, and things would go a lot quicker. But I'd like to at least get the armor, because who knows what abnormality number two is. 
I'd like to at least have some armor ready just in case, right? All right, that is two armor. I'm gonna make one more because I'd like to hire another employee. And we'll take someone from chat probably. And uh, in case you guys are wondering on the future tubers that are watching the video later on, yes, you can leave comments with your names and I will get you in here eventually. Uh, I'm going to probably prioritize the live chat or the the patrons or uh, YouTube members first. So I've got probably 10 or 12 names of those guys I want to go with. And, um, and then we'll take in whoever, any, anyone else that wants, basically. A demonic broom. Well, like I said, this is the safest of the abnormalities. There's probably not too much about this guy that can kill you. The next one, though, well, we'll see. I did not get the perfect, so we've got to do one more. You can also pre-move your guys into the rooms. You don't have to send them from the regenerator to, uh, to the, to the work. So, you know, you can move them around the, the facility. So, this, this hallway, this hallway takes you to his room. This hallway will take you to an elevator, and there'll be kind of a mirror on that sign. Oh, alert, alert. Clip off meltdown. I don't even think I, I can just ignore it, actually, because we're just going to end the day anyway. Oh, there is one more thing we should do before we end the day, though. As soon as we get the armor. The last thing. Well, we're consistently getting nines. That's not bad. It doesn't look like either of us got the lucky drop, the ego gift, or you'd be able to see a little, uh... You'd be able to see that item on their head, so you'd know they had it, and then you could check for it here in this this menu. But uh, anyway, so we got three armors, that'll be fine for now. And what I forgot about was the story. So this is where things get wordy, and I'll try to just read through it a little bit quick, but some of these are really good. And uh, I feel like it really builds the story up as we go. And sometimes, like, th those story paragraphs, they unlock as you complete these sections. Sometimes these stories really help learn how to deal with the abnormality. Like, you might only have a tip and you're like, I don't know what that means. But the story might explain it a little bit better. It, it just depends on the translation. So we know that it's a giant skull. While its appearance is bizarre, incidents of violence against employees by it has rarely been recorded. It feeds on the evil that surfaces during conversations between people. The assigned employee must confess their sins to it. Its feeding mechanism is still unknown. Now... One thing to note here is that sometimes there are abnormality interactions, of course, between different abnormalities. So it is nice to remember their story because if you find something else that has some weird interaction with it, it's nice to know what you're in for ahead of time before somebody's like, oh, if I see one sin, I blow up your base. It's, it's nice to know about that ahead of time, if that's the kind of thing. I'm not saying that there is a situation like that, but, you know. Uh, experiment log. The sins have been cataloged in three levels. At level one... A small lie or action that either goes unnoticed or can be shared in jest. Level 2, sins that are more serious and are only shared to the closest of friends. Level 3, sins are so profound that they cannot be shared with anyone and are taken to the grave. Redacted has been assigned to confess level 1 sins. Energy production increased by 12%. Redacted has been assigned to confess level 2 sins. Energy production 15%. Level 3 sins. One minute and 48 seconds after the employee was sent in, a bright flash of light was seen. The light was so bright that it was seen even outside the containment unit. Immediately following the light, there was a company-wide power outage. The phenomena lasted for two days. Redacted lost six years of their memory. The experiment was cancelled following the incident. The level of mental corruption of all employees in the department was greatly decreased. Ethics decree that all footage of those who participated in the experiment were to be kept sealed but the incident left us no choice but to review the footage in the containment unit now i just want to say i do know a little bit here i'm not i'm, I'm not going to spoil anything i promise but it does turn out and this is why it's such a good example that literally this paragraph does apply to something else that we may or may not see in our base later on it'll probably take ages if it even ever happens it might not even happen but this actually does apply to the story of the game with a different abnormality, specifically. These really high level sin confessions, that's something that might happen in this Let's Play. Again, I'm trying not to spoil it, just, I'm just saying, you know, there's stuff like that. 
Don't look it up. He'll ruin it. Redacted. This happened during Redacted. There's a lot of that. At around 4 p.m. By the way, will this really work? Anyway, there was a railway about 20 minutes from my house. Some of my good friends and I decided to have ourselves dressed as forest animals. One of us decided to dress as a deer. It was a crude costume, one that could hardly be called a costume to be honest. It was just a pair of clumsily made antlers in a dark outfit with some deer-like spots on it. Anyway, I don't know how our deer friends... <laughs> Uh, sorry. I, I don't know how our dear friend wandered into the woods. Uh, we didn't even realize he was missing for an hour. We looked for him and finally found him in some bushes. We called out his name, and I'm not sure if it was from relief of finally finding us or what, but he started sprinting towards us. And that's when we heard it, the gunshots. Bang, bang, bang. We didn't know where it came from, but when I came to my senses, I saw that his blood splattered all the way to my feet. After that, not one of us dressed up as an animal ever again. Observation log number four. Its eyes are empty. It is a skull after all. But I doubt it's blind. I feel its gaze on me and it's listening to me. And confessing to it lightens my heart. Afterwards, we investigated incidents during the period of the employee's hometown to get a better picture. We learned that a boy named Justin was shot and killed in a deer costume by hunters during a deer hunting season. The deer hunting season. Unlike the employee's confession, Justin was repeatedly bullied by other kids, and witnesses said they heard the kids shout, Run, Justin, run! right before the gunshots. After the incident, the kids at the scene moved out of town, and deer hunting was banned in the area. So that's your kind of stories we're going to get. Not all of them will be this long. This is, you know, it's your introductory story. So of course this is a bit bigger and more, actually, pretty well translated for the most part. So, there you go. That's one sin. That's... Okay, there was a side effect of not... I didn't pause it. <laughs> well, that'll teach me. So, um... Because we didn't deal with the meltdown in the 60 second timer, it actually subtracted from our total power. Of course. And I believe it subtracts... I think it's the max amount that it can output. So if you skip it, it goes down minus 10, like, for that one. If something can give you 30, it'll be minus 30. In case you're wondering, this is just a log of the people who've done any events. This is actually quite useful for certain abnormalities. So, while it might not matter for one sin, it's good to have around for later. And I need to do one more time. <laughs> just because we can't end our first dig that quickly. Alright, one more insight from me and that'll call it up. I do apologize if this seems a little slow early on. I promise it will get much faster and more hectic before too long. This is certainly meant to be your introduction where you're just learning the ropes. And honestly, the fact that you lose energy on a clip-off meltdown is probably pretty good information to learn. Also, we'll have enough money to buy more stuff if we want. More energy money. Let's, uh... Let's buy uh, a, a pen, pentit, penitence mace, please. All right, good enough. Day one, that's it. All right, so this is our summary. Uh, this is if you succeeded on the quest, which of course we did, and a summary of your stat changes. So both Finn and myself got an upgrade in our prudence because that's what we worked on, and therefore our maximum SP went up. Uh, Finn, because he did a little bit of justice, got a little bit more of those stats. And then if people died or anything, you can see it there. 21 minutes is a terrible time. But the F, the ranking is based on survival, not time. It's not a speedrun kind of game. It's just a don't die kind of game. Um, and then you get lobotomy points. I'm not sure how this ties in. If it's rewarded for getting higher ranks or not dying. Or maybe you get more points if people die. I don't know. But anyway, um, we can use those to, to purchase new employees. And then the promotion is like their total employee rank. So every few stat upgrades will get an employee rank upgrade as well. And then you could retry the day. Like I said at the beginning, if you're having troubles with your day, just press retry. You don't even have to go to load. It just starts the day over. Alright. Day one complete. Super long day. Gotta just sit back and enjoy the mood sometimes. So once you're done, you gotta select your next abnormality. So, obviously, if you 
recognize the ID numbers or the description you'll know ahead of time. If you're playing blindly though, of course, you won't know. So you just have to go with your gut. And some of them will be real bad and some of them won't be so bad. Somewhere in the distance you hear seagulls. I hear they'll poke your knees though. People have been committing sins for a long time. For a long time. Why do they commit such a thing, even when they know that it is bad? This is a record of the day that we must never forget. So... Hmm, which one should we pick? I wonder how I should do this, because I think I know all three of them. I don't really remember this one, to be honest. I know at least these two. Um... Why don't we just pick the most fun one? <laughs> this one's too easy. This one's like the same as one sin. This would be the smart pick. If you're playing along, go with the seagulls. This is... I'm not going to say it's super, uh, completely safe. None of them are 100% harmless. But this would be a nice safe pick. This will be a more interesting pick. And I don't remember this one. This is a record of the day that we must never forget. Oh, wait. I do remember that. That one's terrible. Don't pick that one. <laughs> if you're just starting out, don't pick that one. That's enough. Yeah, that'll cause you problems. Well, honestly, both of these would be bad picks if you're brand new to the game. <laughs> anyway, we'll go with we'll go with the sins because it relates to one sin sorta. Face the fear, build the future. It's the motto of the founder, whom we call A. Which part of the motto do you prefer? What do you guys think? Face the fear, build the future. I feel like we're not going to get anywhere if we can't face the fear. Especially as, like, new players, so yeah. We're the first humans on Earth to discover abnormalities. Well, not me. I am not a human. Ha ha ha. We face the fear, fella. You got it right. Good guess. How should I put it? We're pioneering a whole new world. Wait a second. Didn't, didn't Aladdin just come out? The new one with the song? This game came out before that. <laughs> the discoveries we made so far are merely the tip of an iceberg. Abnormalities were among us from the beginning, but we have only recently noticed their presence. We discover them, and we fear them. They are frighteningly alien in nature. So, just, just for procedural information, there is generally an end of day wrap up with Angela, and if you succeeded on your quest, the section you're in, for instance, we're in Malkuth's section right now. Their story will progress if you complete their quest. If you do not complete their quest, then you will miss part of the dialogue. Like, I think everyone finishes this quest, but, you know, the, the scenes are sort of linked based on what you do in the game, basically, if, if that makes sense. Anyway, there was some confusion last time. I am in charge of the security of your office. But I forgot to pay attention to the meeting room. The employee who made a fuss yesterday resigned. Good job. You know what it means to resign here in the company, don't you? <laughs> I take it as no. Then it's my fault, let me explain. Apparently, some aspects of the company may shock you. Apparently. We have a variety of roles here. Like a well-oiled machine, everyone has their role and they must do their part without error. Now, imagine one of the gears wears out faster than the other. It's obvious that the gear would grind down the other gear it's connected to, and so on. It would be wise to replace such a gear before it grinds the machine to halt. That is why we say, that is why we say resign. Excellent, you did what I asked for. I knew I could count on you. Well, to tell you the truth, I was a little worried about you at first. Oh, uh, how was my day? It was alright. Had an emergency protocol drill. No one was injured or died. Everybody did a good job. Not that the team is perfect, though. By the way, have you seen them? Some entities that are creepier than the abnormalities. I sometimes sense them in the corridors when I am alone. The drills do no good when you see them. We know nothing about them. No matter how meticulous the plan is, it can't control the unknown. There. I don't know. I'm not afraid of them because she's an AI. She's a machine. She doesn't have feelings. I... <laughs> I feel something different. Something that... It's a strange feeling. Something nauseatic. How would you know? She's a friggin' AI. Maybe she's an AI that has nausea. What can I say? Something wriggling inside me. 
little by little. Alright, she is referring to something that we'll learn about eventually. Something that happens in the hallways. It's not an abnormality. Anyway, next quest. Your job is not just keeping the abnormalities under control. You need to make them happy. Complete four works with a good. That's fine. Alright, and then end of our day, we unlock another section. Bam. And then this is where the game saves. Synchronizing may as well be saving. We also get to pick an upgrade as we complete quests. You'll get to pick all three of them, but you get to pick the order you choose them in, because you get one per quest, I believe. Um, this kind of stuff is going to apply to multiple departments. We only have one department, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, same thing with this one. If you had multiple departments, you'll need these to send your people... Basically, this is nice, but not necessary. I think this is practically necessary for a large base. And, I mean, this is even more important anyway, so we're going to start with, you know, fast forward. <laughs> Simple enough. Although, it, it might be interesting to note that the game has a built-in lore description for how the timer of running the base works. Does that make sense? The actual game knows, like, Malkuth knows that we can speed or slow time up to control our base. That's not totally insignificant. I'm not trying to spoil it, I swear. But seriously, that it's interesting. Anyway, um, so we got a, a new one. Let's let's. So basically, like for the let's play people, the video people, that's got to be end the episode because this will be our break point where we can sort of save and load in between and do our setup. So for those of you watching on the YouTube video side of things, I have no idea how long that video was, but thanks for hanging in there. I hope you've enjoyed. Like I said at the beginning, please don't spoil the game in the comments, and I will see you for episode two if this ever gets posted.